What's up, guys? Welcome to the first ever episode 117 of the Kind of Funny Games cast. As always, I'm Tim Geddes, joined by one of the coolest dudes in video games, Greg Miller. And joining us for the first time, and man, I've wanted this to happen for a long, long time. I feel like I have two, man. Yeah. Andre Seegers of Game Explain. Thank you for having me. Oh, you guys are too kind. Thank no, you. please. It's an honor. Get up on this microphone, otherwise Kevin's going to yell at me. All right. He well, throws things I'm okay at me with too. that, actually. What but. the fuck <laughs> off, Andre? <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> this was, so you guys have history going way, way back in a way that I don't. Yeah. A lot of people don't know this. We actually lived together for a few months. I yeah. did not know that. Yeah, yeah. yeah nine See? months I lived in, I lived with you and Micah in that house. That's and, right. and Derek, too, right? Or no, you came in after Derek left or whatever. That's right. So, yeah, like, that was such a weird, it like, because when I think about time. it, I still think about you as, no, you just, we worked together at IGN for a right. brief stint before you went off and fucking made your millions. And, like, <laughs> yeah, but we lived together in this weird house what of a hodgepodge hell? thing. Right? I did not know that. Yeah. I slept on an air mattress in uh, <laughs> the, like, I was moving across country. I sent out my things to IGN. We like, had, so yeah, but I was at IGN at the time, and we had your flyers up on the walls. It looked like a wanted poster. It was like, I hey, made I need the, housing. I made these posters. Damon's always like, these are the worst things you could have done. Why would anyone <laughs> want to live to you? Because it was just, I need shelter in all caps. And it was this photo of me screaming at the camera, but nobody knew who I was. Classic Greg and, Miller. And so yep. nobody bit on it. And then uh, Micah's old roommate kind of went crazy, and they he left the house. And so I got to move into his room, and I brought my CRTV, my inflatable mattress, and I stayed on it for nine months on the floor. Oh, my God. Yeah. And then, yeah, we all hung out and did that. And we, we'd play uh, Calling All Cars in the Living Room. That's right. Oh, wow. man. A lot Good of Taco time. Bell was consumed in that place. Some double dash in there. Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. Fuck oh, that. Oh, my God. Dash, yeah. That is so funny. There's yeah. nothing better than that. So you guys worked together at IGN. Yeah, when did you leave IGN? I left in 2008. Wow. Yeah. So yeah. So long ago. I know. Yeah. I wish you wouldn't, re wouldn't remind me of that. Because <laughs> it is. We're so old. That, that blows my mind. Like, because I didn't even start at IGN until 2010. Yep. So like you had been gone, but like the the legend of you lived on. <laughs> well, I don't know if that's a good thing or bad thing. Oh, it's good. I mean, because we would talk about. I mean, we do our daily Smash Bros. games, and it was always just like, well, back in my day, Andre would come and fucking wreck shot. Right. I was like, oh shit. All right. I, I yeah. I, I, we had a whole tournament at IGN with uh, you know I think Fram played. Oh yeah, uh, Fram played. Those yeah, like, yeah. I think everyone played, um, and I think some people are still a little bit bitter about how oh, things they are. went down. Yeah. They definitely are to this no, I mean, day. That's the thing is, I, I when I think about like you know 2007 when I started, like you were such a part of it, and because I, I always tell this one story too of like how PAX has evolved, and when I didn't yeah. know what PAX even was, but you went to go do the Mario Kart tournament, and you came back, and I was like, how was it? And you're like, it was good, but I had to turn my badge around because <laughs> IGN was so hated at the time, and right. PAX was like such a community thing that like nobody you didn't want to be associated with IGN. When you're like, that's fucking weird. Weird as hell. How things have changed, yeah, right? Exactly, yeah. exactly. Oh my God. And, and I mean, the biggest change, and I know we're going to get to it eventually, so I won't burn too I, much. I, let's, but we'll, I'm changing Fuck the you, Tim. <laughs> this is going to be the topic. I'm oh. going to do the rigmarole okay. right now. All right, rigmarole. This is the Kind of Funny Games cast. Each and every week, we get together to talk about video games and all the things we love about them. If you want to get it early, you go to patreon.com slash kind of funny games. If you want to get it late, you can go to youtube.com slash kind of funny games. Either way, we appreciate you and all the things that you do for your communities and your local. I really like you planting the trees like you're doing. Retail put. What? Yeah, 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 keep keep planting them trees. I'm yeah. proud of you, Kevin. You do you not like the the tree planters? Kevin doesn't like anything. Kevin, can't I just like seeing him struggle it. for the Kev cam. <laughs> you think you would learn to turn it on and get ready for it every show? I'll give the full experience plan. here. Yeah. 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 This is it. You see it. You see it all. All the wheels are <laughs> also, moving what, right now. What the hell's going on with these trees? What are you talking about trees now? Because we said what you do for your community, and you know you always see those community commercials of people planting trees around their neighborhood. All right, so none of these kind of funny kids are planting trees. I guarantee someone out there. You is know who's planting trees? Tom yeah. Bach, our Patreon producer for the month. Thank you, Tom, for being a fantastic dude. All right, let's get to the matter at hand. I, I had a whole show planned. We were going to go do orders, but I like where this conversation's going. Sure. So we're jumping ahead. I want to talk about Game Explain, the history of Game Explain, which in a lot of ways is the history of you. Am yeah, I correct? Yeah, they're, they're kind of intertwined. Yeah. So it starts at, let's start with IGN, unless there's something interesting before that. Uh, yeah, it's, uh, I don't know, well, so I guess I have to start before IGN even, because I actually, Game Explain itself is 15 years old, I think. I had the idea for this back before video or even YouTube was a thing really online. I was making videos online back in 99. Um, 99? That, uh, for a website called Nintendo Vision. So we were doing full narrated video guides. I hadn't hit, I hadn't hit puberty yet, so my voice like super high. <laughs> I amazing. can't imagine. It's, I can't imagine. So I post super high on it. It's, it's it. crazy. Uh, so that's where I started like getting used to video editing and like appreciating what goes into it, and I enjoyed that. 1999 um, video editing. What were you using? I was using... Oh, 
It was called Pinnacle Software. Pinnacle. And oh, the name, God. It, 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 even it, hearing that makes me just cringe. It, as it should. It's horrible. It's, yeah. it's like the worst, but it's all we had at the time, like on the budget. It was like $80, which was reasonable. The thing is, that thing would crash like all the time during renders or anytime you like import anything. It didn't matter. Uh, so it was a process, but. You know, to its credit, it's the only thing I could work with. Um, so, anyways, that process that eventually evolved uh, over time to to me wanting to start a new broader website called Game Explain. I came up with the name randomly one day, and I wanted to do expander coverage to to all consoles, which is ironic now, seeing as how we cover mostly only Nintendo. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, anyways, uh, we I did that for like a year or two while working side jobs. I worked in Nintendo in the call center briefly. Nice. Wait. Um, one eight hundred two five five three seven zero zero. Dude, you got man. I don't know why I remember the Nintendo Call Center <laughs> number by heart, but I do. Because that's the kind of Nintendo <laughs> and, fan you are. And to this day, it's still the same number, which blows my mind. You remember the uh, the Mario holding the toolbox? Oh, box? of course. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah he's got the about it. It's just inviting. <laughs> it was, I, just, right? I just wanted to talk to them. <laughs> Maybe you talk to me then. Maybe. Maybe. You Holy might have. shit! That so weird. That might. I love it. Do some weird fan fiction. Yeah, now. exactly. Oh, I want to. Missed connections. Yep. So, anyways, so while while I was working at Nintendo, that's why. Drop the game explain thing. I'm like, this isn't working for me. Like, uh, no one does, you know, video wasn't really a thing then, so no one found out about our website or anything. Um, so while working at Nintendo is when I, wa- I that's when I realized I wanted to work in the game industry proper, like IGN, GameSpot, one of these sites, uh, um, or even Nintendo Power. Nintendo Power is literally like around the corner from me. So I actually applied to them. They never got back to me. Uh, which- Wait, hold on. Where'd you live at this time? This is in Redmond. Okay, okay. So, yeah, cool. I'm in, up, up, or, I'm in, uh, yeah, I was up in Issaquah, Washington, like 20 minutes from Seattle, and Nintendo of America is in Redmond. Or, yeah, Redmond, yeah. So, um, so while working there, uh, I applied in, to Nintendo Power, which is around the corner from me in the same building. They never got back to me. <laughs> but, like, a few days later, IGN did get back to me after I applied, like, 20 times to them. And so, yeah, so got hired at IGN. As. Um, as a guides editor, mm, which classic. is, I was just watching your your Goldfarb uh, yeah, episode. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he was saying that's how every, that's how everyone like gets started at IGN. It's kind of true. That's how I got my start. That's how Hillary Colin got started. Hillary, yeah. yeah. Um, the difference is for me, I did nothing with that, and I stayed the guides editor the entire time. <laughs> um, whereas I that you know I wanted to be able to put my foot in the door, but you know obviously I wanted to work on the Nintendo team. They were down in LA, so that was a little bit tricky. Uh, so yeah, I mean I had a great time at IGN. Moved on from there to Gamespot. Oh, now he's but, now. Oh, no, 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 no. He says it like it was no big deal. <laughs> right. This was fucking WWF WCW <laughs> shit. It's that, true. I will never forget when that happened because nobody in my time there, nobody had done that yet. That hadn't happened. And GameSpot was out in front of right. us. It was beating IGN. And this is back in the day when it was at events. GameSpot people weren't allowed to talk to IGN people. And IGN people obviously didn't talk to GameSpot yeah. people. And I'll never forget that where... <laughs> You went into a, like a conference room with Mark Ryan, and yep. then they like escorted you out. Oh yeah, you got your shit instant. and you left. Like you weren't allowed to talk to anybody. Like it wasn't like cool. No, it was. I mean, I remember. I don't even think I. I don't even think I mentioned it by name to Mark Ryan. Like I was. I, like I was afraid of even uttering the words. It yeah, was like, yeah, yeah. It was like Baltimore or something. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um. So, so Mark I, Ryan, I it love was, it. Yeah. So it, it the was most vindictive. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I think it was pretty obvious nice. where I was going to at the time. Yeah. So and I remember that. Like that was like this is. In the heyday of when I was talking about me and Colin shirtless pounding on the IGN logo, talking about getting IGN tattoos, and we're like, he's dead to us. <laughs> we're like, dumb 24 year old kids, like, we'll never talk to him. I, like, da da da. I, I mean, I actually heard that through the grapevine, like, yeah, those statements. Of like, course. He's a traitor. He traded. Exactly. Because no, no one did it. We were such a, like, that <laughs> was so when. so funny. It is wrestling. That is yeah, when I, yeah. I mean, that was when IGN was like, a fucking family. Yep. You know what I mean? Where like n- work ended, but you just went out together and partied together and lived together and came back and did it all over again. Yeah. It's so, like, it was such a, <gasps> what a betrayal. <laughs> you know what I mean? As if you had made a blood oath to us. <laughs> Cause I think we lived together. We never even talked. You know what yeah, I mean? We, like, I we mean, were like close. I mean, to be completely fair, I was like even more awkward than I am now. So it was, uh, <laughs> to come, no, nope, none of us knew so, how to handle no. it. But wait, what was, what, why? Why did you make that? Job? Why stab us in the back? <laughs> right. Well, so I mean, for me, it was it was purely. So I was getting sick of doing guides. Mm-hmm. So I was getting tired. Of, I'd been doing it for two years at IGN, um, and up to that point, at Game Explain, because at Game Explain at the time, it was only video guides. That's all we did. Uh, so I'd already started burning out doing the video side of it for guides, um, and then doing the the written side of it at IGN. I started really burning out on that. Yeah. Um, so I thought maybe a, a change of scenery would be good. Also, the, the pay raise wasn't the worst thing ever going against spot. Um, but you know, I only I stuck out there about for a year and a half. I'm like, I cannot do guides anymore. I yeah. can't do this. Um, it was at that time actually when I had I'd been thinking of what can I do? Like YouTube's becoming a thing. I was hearing about people making a living off of YouTube, which mm-hmm. was 
crazy to me. I'm like, how can you make a living off of YouTube? Yeah. Um, I still had no idea when I actually started getting explained. I knew nothing about that. <laughs> um, but anyways, I'm getting ahead of myself. So as I was thinking about, like, you know, maybe I can try restoring Game Explained on YouTube, um, that's when actually Micah, uh, yeah. who we just talked about we were living with, um, if you're an old IGN fan, Micah from Micah's beard on Game Scoop. Scoop, yeah. 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 Scoop. Uh, I think people remember him from his beard rubbing out against yep. the microphone. Yeah, he used to rub the mic on his beard. Yep. So he, I think he was living in Japan at the time. Japan. I can't quite remember, but he was coming back to the States. He was looking for a job. I'm like, hey, I've had this idea. I'd like to restart this idea I've had for a while yeah. now. What if you try to do this on YouTube? And he's like, yeah, it sounds like a good idea. Let's give it a shot. Um, so yeah, I straight up just quit GameSpot, like no backup plan at all. I just living off my savings. And that's how I started doing gaming. And that, that got back to IGN, and we were all like, <laughs> all right, make it a living on YouTube. Good luck, Andre. I mean, well, so that is what's the most mind-blowing thing about your entire entire journey here is, all right, so this must have been, what, 2010 -ish? 2010, uh, March 2010, yeah. So in 2010, you did what we're doing now. Yep. Like, we did this in 2015 and acted like it was a big deal. Yeah. But, like, you did it five years prior and, like, didn't, know that it could work we knew it could work we had patreon we've seen other people do it but like that's are, why the first time crazy? i saw you afterwards i apologized I was like hey man like we never it's not like i spit in your face something but i was like no i right. remember when it got announced and we were all like what a stupid thing and now i'm like now we're doing the exact same thing you you were such a trailblazer i'm so glad it's worked and I'm, it's i mean to be completely fair i mean it was a stupid decision like i mean it worked out that's the difference yeah, yeah, it was yeah. stupid it worked out i think that's a different you know that's that's what being an entrepreneur is you take risks you know, often they don't work out. Luckily, I was fortunate enough that it did work out. Yeah. Um, but I mean, I'm going to be honest. Like, it was rough. Okay. Like, it was super rough. Uh, like, it was, you know, when you start off, it's, it's exciting. Then the reality hits you. Um, I mean, I think it was, I don't, I think it was a little bit different for you guys. You guys, like, you guys took off like a rocket right away. So that's, I mean, that's awesome. For us, though, like, we had, like, it seemed like we had some initial uh, momentum. Then it leveled out. I was like, how can we afford this? We had, like, three guys at the time. It was me, Micah, and my good friend, uh, Skylar, who also helped me back in the day on a few videos for the original Game Explain. Um... And yeah, we were all like just living off our savings and we were making peanuts off our yeah. views on YouTube. Um, and we were also, I don't think we were even monetizing them properly at the time. Again, we had no idea what we were doing. I mean, to be fair, 2010, YouTube didn't know what it was <laughs> yeah, doing. Yeah, that's true. Like, like if people want to give YouTube shit now for like, oh, you're, you're fucking up all the ads. You're doing, in 2010, it, a long way, yeah. it was a shit show of like you had to get partnered. How? What was that process? Who gets paid? Who doesn't get paid? Right. There was no real rules. And it was all very just like you either get lucky or you don't. Yeah. So <laughs> it was a wild west back then. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, I mean, like, so. It was rough. Like, I'll cut ahead here. So, eventually, um, Micah and Skylar both left. Skylar left just to go to college, and Micah left to do something else. So, it was just me at this point. And I was starting to get, like, pretty depressed. I'm like, man, like, what kind of, you know, no one has faith in this. How can I make this work? Um, and it, my savings, like, was dwindling. I was, so, eventually, I reached a point where I was, like, two years in. I was paying my second year... Uh, second year tax bill for the for the year and at the time I was supposed to pay quarterly I had no idea what I was doing back then literally none so I was paying I paid my full year's taxes at once I'm like this is killing me I've got nothing and I actually replied back at IGN did you oh, I, I, I did yeah um because when I left when I actually left IGN for uh game spot Mark Mark was like hey if you ever want to come back you know yeah you, doors you open can. yeah doors open which was awesome um we yeah. would have fucking shanked you as soon as <laughs> oh, I'm you sure. saw you I, yeah <laughs> welcome like, back <laughs> uh, this is fucking gang vita <laughs> Uh, so I actually reapplied for uh, for guys' position at IGN, and then um, they were like, "Hey, can you throw together like a portal video or something?" I'm like, oh, "No, I'm lazy. I don't want to do a video that wow. that I can't directly monetize or something." That I'm is like, so funny I'm because like, Alfredo Diaz got that job. Really? That job wow. because it was the the thing was make a portal, portal walkthrough video. video, and Alfredo was like, "Tim, I've never edited a video before." <laughs> so we did the classic Tim Gettys thing of Alfredo, you're coming over. I'm gonna teach you. You're gonna talk the talk and walk the Crash walk, course. and you're gonna fucking prove it. Yep. And he. Learn how to edit from that video. That's wow. awesome. That was his Damn. first video he ever edited. He got the job, then started running Gameplay Lab and whatever. But anyways. Yeah, so I mean, so I, I, like, I broke down. Like I was out of money. I had a few thousand left in my bank wait, account. Wait, wait, wait. So you part of the job, make a video because you're, oh. you're like, I'm going broke. Be like, yeah, I don't want to make the video. So, okay, I forget, <laughs> I forget the exact order of events here. So I think, oh, I, I'm trying to remember now. I may have broken, I, I think I, no. I think I applied for IGN first. Um, I realized I didn't want to do the portal guide. That's not what I wanted to do. I didn't want to go back to IGN. That's, gotcha, gotcha, so that's when gotcha. I realized I wanted okay. to get out of the game explain. Uh, then I think that's the tax bill hit. I'm like, how can I how can I deal with this? Like, I have no money left. I have to make this work. At the same time, uh, I had just broke up with my girlfriend, too, of like two years. God. So, like, everything's crashing down. And she was always, like, kind of my safety net. Like, she always offered. I never took her up on the offer. Like, she's like, hey, if you need any money, I can give it to you. I wouldn't have that. But I always knew in the back of my mind, like, that was there. So all this was happening at once. I knew I had no more safety net. I had to make this work. So I think that is actually what led to 
it working out for me because it lit a fire into my ass. I'm like, I have to make, figure out some way to make this work. So what did you do? What did you change? I started developing new kind of content, like it's, uh, you know, refocused only on Nintendo stuff, everything. Um, developing new kind of content like uh, analysis videos, which have become kind of you know famous for, infamous yeah. for. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, discussion videos, you know, it's really broadening out, just gotcha. covering everything. Like I like to say, I, it's basically the way I look at it is I wanted to do IGN my own way for Nintendo. Sure. So that's kind of what I felt like I was doing. Um, and that started, people started finding us. It started building up a little uh, a fan base from that. And yeah, it just started growing from there. That's so, awesome. Yeah. Here you are now. It's, I know. But you guys doing, you did the same thing now. Yeah, it's, yeah. Well, it's crazy. Ours wasn't nearly as arduous. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm glad it worked out, though. That's no, awesome. It's, yeah. What's cool to me is, like, I am a legitimate fan of what you guys do because it's the type of content in terms of covering games that I wish that we were capable of, both as Kind of Funny and as IGN went back when you were there. Because, like, my favorite type of video game content to consume is the analysis stuff and the Easter egg shit mm-hmm. and, like, the hey, this game that you love, there's this thing you didn't know about it, right? Or this, this new game right now, or like the Breath of the Wild is a perfect example right now. My favorite thing is like, oh, you can make a mine cart, like a, a mine, uh, yeah, I guess mine cart, a go-kart yeah, by yeah. using the magnesis and all that shit. Like you can create the flying machine and all that type of shit. Yep. I'm like, man, this is so cool. But like you guys are the masters of that. And like I love when a trailer comes out, whether it's a movie or a game, looking at it and being like frame by frame of like what, what is new in here? What are the cool things? And you guys just know <laughs> everything. And I, it's like not just one game. Like I could do that for Mario or for like the early gens of Pokemon. Couldn't do it for every other Nintendo franchise. And it seems like you guys just have this knowledge base of all of it. See, that's where it's really lucky for me because um, Derek is another full-time guy who works for for Game Explain. And luckily his his ga- or his knowledge base fills in the gaps that I have. Mm. Like he's a he's big on Fire Emblem, he's a big Sonic fan. So he feels like he like we complement each other perfectly. Like I'm the Mario guy, I'll co- I'm the Zelda guy. He can cover um everything else that yeah. I don't know about. So how big is the team right now? So right now it's uh, basically three guys. It's me, Derek, and Ash, and then gotcha. we have a few other you know people who help out. Contributors, and contributors, stuff, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Cool. So, cool. Um, yeah. I mean, like I'm, I'm like I'm seeing your guys' studio. I'm like, this is awesome. Like this is like this is kind of like what I always hoped it would be for us. The difference is we're all spread across the country, mm. yeah. so it's a little bit harder to work out that way. But so how? Where is everybody then? So uh, so I'm in San Francisco, of course. Ash is in L.A. Derek's in Pennsylvania, and then um, our another contributor is in like Vancouver, British Columbia. So gotcha. yeah, we're pretty spread out here. Have you guys thought about trying to relocate somewhere together? It's I think it's come up, but it kind of, it's it kind of works right now as is a bit because like Derek's on East Coast time, so he can cover mm. stuff as it's, you mm. know some breaks in the morning before I'm up, plus I wake up late anyway. Yeah. Uh, so he can cover the morning stuff. Um so I don't know, like we're all like kind of comfortable where we're at. Like I think it'd be I think we could probably produce better content if we were all together, but in terms of like our lifestyles it kind of works with us being where we're at. Like, mm-hmm. you, know, his, you know, his friends and family are all obviously out there. Same here, so. And so yours, everybody just works from home? Yeah, everyone just works from do home. They, do you have, like, your own studio? Do you have your own room? For I them? have my own uh, corner of the bedroom. Okay, okay. In a small San Francisco bedroom. Of course. So, yeah, yeah. yeah that'll, that's... The smallest of bedrooms. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I mean, it's actually, it's funny. Like, when we started off, we actually had... Uh, I had the big. I turned the biggest bedroom in the house when the one we were living in South yeah, San Francisco yeah. into the Game Explain office. We had three guys working in this massive studio. I mean, probably about the size of this room, actually. Wow. Um, and we had like a green screen wall. Whereas, like, we've gone back from that now. Like, we're all yeah, in our yeah, own yeah. corners of the U.S. We're all working out of our bedrooms or apartments. So that's what's just so weird about it. When I talk to you about it, and we've, we've caught up at events, of just like you were doing what we were doing, just so like to be. That the third bedroom in the old house <laughs> right. that we shared was that thing while yeah. we were working on it's this like, spare bedroom. Yeah, like we're going. It's like I'm like the Benjamin Button, right? Like, <laughs> <laughs> so. hey man, it works though, right? Like, yeah, that's it's, the thing. it's working out for right now. Yeah, yeah. Because well, how many YouTube subs, subs do you have right now? We're at uh, 763,000. I think. Yeah, I mean, yeah, you're doing the right thing. That, I mean, I mean that's insane. Audience. And like, yeah. what's cool about it is like you guys are the Nintendo guys of the internet, and that's. An, an amazing thing like that's super awesome to be known for that shit like Greg like you are the PlayStation guy right mm. like you and Colin made that a thing with our powers combined like, yeah, yeah, yeah right, right. right. No, exactly <laughs> now, but it's somebody like... cared about Xbox <laughs> 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 I'm kidding it's really the PC players I hate <laughs> just kidding again too Come but I mean it's it's nuts that you kind of 
really got in there and you have that dedicated fan base that, that's going to be there and wants to hear your opinions more than anyone else's opinions about Nintendo uh, trailers, games, like whatever it is. And I think that that it's super awesome and what's cool is I think it transcends, like you see on NeoGAF, there's people that aren't necessarily Nintendo fans, but they still want to hear what you guys say because you're the guys that really know the shit. It's, I mean, it's still weird to me, honestly. Like, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm not used to, like, I'm not used to this kind of attention at all. And, you know, I'm, I don't do on-camera stuff very often, so it's not very often that I get recognized down public, even. Like, if I, the weird thing is, like, I'm kind of visible until I, I start talking. Yeah. That's like, hey, that guy fell like, on Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, Like, I was at, when I was actually up in Seattle, I was at, uh, I was ordering at this um, dessert place, and the guy's like, your voice sounds familiar. I'm yeah. like, do you watch Game Explain videos? Like, yeah. I'm like, oh, that's, prob- that's probably it. That's it. <laughs> no, that's so funny. Um, it's you and Brandon Jones are, are the oh, voices yeah, yeah. where you're like, it's so iconic and you know that voice. But Brandon Jones, I'm so happy that he's on camera now with Easy Allies because it's like, he deserves to be, to be recognized because that man's voice is the voice of a generation yeah. of people that grew up watching game trailers, you know? It really is, yeah. I mean, that's another group doing the exact same thing. You exactly. Know, on, on, by themselves and try yeah. their own. Yeah. They're, they're killing it too, man. It's it's nuts. It's nuts to see everybody kind of doing slight variations that work for them, right. you know, in their own way. Because, like, they are way more about the the games of it. And they, since they have so many dudes, they fill a lot of holes. <laughs> Uh, yeah, yeah. But you know what I mean? Like, there's like the guys that are really into the JRPGs. There's the guys that are into the shooters and into the you know more platform specific games. It's cool. <coughs> and then there's just us doofuses <laughs> Do whatever talking about whatever the let's, fuck. Let's we want. bring out Chad. And see what <laughs> yeah, Chad's gonna say about all this crap. What's going on? Yeah, yeah. yeah but that's hey, cool. man, if it works, we're all filling holes. Then. Yeah, you know that's, I mean? it. that's, that's it. That's it. Yeah. yeah. But so where, where do you kind of see the future of games playing going? You know, I, I get I get asked that every now and then, and I I really have no idea. Like I'm winging it day to day. Like, and I feel our content. <laughs> Our content does like I feel like it evolves slowly over time. Um, so I, I don't know. Like it's not really a conscious thing. Like at points it is, but it's mm-hmm. just kind of con- constantly changing. Like I think ideally, like it'd be awesome to have like a setup like this, for instance. Yeah. But for right now, like I'm just just winging it. You know, yeah. like maybe bring on more people at some point. Um, you know, just keep growing as we are. But yeah, I'm pretty happy with where <laughs> it's at and how it's going. So, so kind of looking at your content. What do you feel are the the projects that you like doing the most? So I, I have a love hate relationship with uh, the analysis. Like those those are fun to do the research on. Putting them together is the worst. I'm um, trying to sort all these all these details and how I want to present these details. How these details tie into each other. We even I'm not fully sure of how they tie into each other. Like our you know our Zelda analysis was over two hours long. Um, and, and real quick, for people who are our fans and not yours, what is an analysis exactly? Sure. So our analysis are basically like IGN Rewind Theater kind of gotcha. or a breakdown. Because we go, you know, we, we, we go hardcore in on these. Um, not to disparage, you know, disparage anyone else. But like we, I spent three months on the Zelda analysis. Three weeks on the new Mario analysis. The new I still Mario. haven't seen the Mario Odyssey one. Uh, I've been waiting for it. it, it yeah, you're going to have to set aside some time for that. <laughs> <laughs> An hour and a half. Um, so, yeah. So I love doing the research on those. It's putting them together that's that's. That is a little bit annoying. So yeah, scripting it, reading the script. I'm horrible at reading scripts. I that's actually the thing I probably hate most: Re- reading the script, editing all my fuck ups in the script. Yeah, of course. So getting that down to you know the actual time, um, and then ed- then getting the video together, editing all the video. It's that that's the worst. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. yeah, but I think the analysis are like that's what that's what put us on the map. That's probably what I'm most what I'm most proud of. So. so what what is the content schedule like for you when you wake up late, as you say? <laughs> what I mean, do you every day have to hit something, or are you waiting to see what Nintendo's putting out and how you're going to twist that and what's going on? It's uh, it's a little bit a it look a bit of a column A, column B. Okay. It's um like if something breaks, we'll cover that. You know, like Nintendo sure. Direct the other day, that you know all all on the Direct, sure. so we're sure. covering everything about that. Um. So we hope stuff comes up. If something does, and that's when we go into scramble mode. Then we do try to have everything, you know, at least something per every day, like two gotcha. or three, two or three things ideally every day. Oh wow. Okay. Um. So yeah, we often have like a few projects working. Like right now, we have some analysis working from the direct. We have some more discussion videos coming up. We'll post. Uh. But yeah, I mean, ideally, there's some kind of news we can cover on that day for discussion or breaking down or whatever. Gotcha. So I mean, we are we really are just winging it by and large. Yeah, that's a good way to be, though. Yeah. And then how have you guys dealt with Nintendo and their YouTube policies and all that stuff? So yeah, those those hit us pretty hard. I was when, gonna say yeah, yeah. Like, we're all about Nintendo. And then they come <laughs> around like, well, hey, we'd like to take thirty percent of your revenue, right? or whatever it is. Yeah. Yeah, not cool. Not yeah. cool. <laughs> um, so that I think what that started in 2014 I think is when that yeah. whole thing started yeah coming online. So yeah, I don't think anyone fully understood what's happening then. Like I as soon as so what happened is 
I, I start getting emails to our Game Explain account, like, this video's been claimed, this video's, this video's been claimed, like, what the shit is this? I mean, what this was at that point. Oh, gosh. And, yeah, That's so, so it, scary. It, it's, it's terrifying, because every time a video is claimed, this is the content ID on YouTube, you know, that, that immediately uh, shuts off revenue for you, and goes right to Nintendo. Yeah. So, and it didn't matter what the video was, if it matched any kind of content, review, preview, uh, you know, fully, you know, these are our own videos that we're just using, um, like, gameplay from to sure. illustrate our points, those get claimed as well. It did not matter. Uh, so that was scary, and at the time we tried contacting Nintendo, and it seemed like they even, at least on the NOA side, even they had no idea what was yeah. going on. Like Did they, you call the one eight hundred two five three seven zero zero? That's number. where I went wrong. Yeah, yeah. I went through what PR. The I screwed hell up. Is going yeah. on? <laughs> uh, so what ended up happening is we, at that point, that's when we we were unaffiliated with any YouTube networks. At that point, we were partnered directly with YouTube. Um, gotcha. Getting paid by them, or getting, you know, they would pay us directly. So that's when we hooked up with. We had been getting all these kind of uh, offers from different YouTube networks. Yeah. Um. And, but I saw no reason to go with one. I'm like, we're doing fine as is. I don't see any reason to to hook up with one. Uh. Now there was because <laughs> by mm. being by being part of so these YouTube networks, they have two groups of people. <laughs> they have the. I think affiliate channels and the managed channels. Mm -hmm. Affiliates are what most channels are. Um, most channels are affiliates. You get like some of their like they'll help you. You know they'll give you, they'll give you resources. Yeah. Um, but it doesn't really provide you with that much, as far as I know. Um, being managed is what was what I needed because this is what uh, makes you immune to content ID. So basically, the network's vouching for you. They're backing you up. They're like, hey, we're claiming you know we're taking responsibility for these videos. The the thing is for them, they're taking a risk too because. While it makes us uh, immune to content ID, our videos won't be claimed automatically anymore mm -hmm. um, by content by content ID. Um, companies can still manually like copyright strike you, and if that happens, that reflects on the entire YouTube network, and they yeah. all like that. And, so, and the, to go even further with that, it's if you get a copyright strike, if you get three strikes on your channel, your channel is just terminated, just disappears. You cannot get it back. If you have one strike, you you can't live stream. They take away a bunch of functionality. Uh, two strikes, I think that uh, you lose ability to comment on things. Like, it, it gets pretty dire yeah. very quickly. And the the thing is with these um, managed YouTube channels, when whatever network that whatever MCN you're with, they also are only allowed three strikes. Okay. So if they if gaming, if, let's say we're all in the same thing, you get a strike, we get a strike, and then some random other thing gets a strike. They get three strikes. That means that their whole network is on pause and hold, and nobody can make any money in the whole network. Uh, you you can fuck things up. Oh, you definitely easy. can. That's why they are super careful who they accept as a managed channel. Like I think our network only has a couple hundred out of thousands. With? We're with Broadband TV. Oh, interesting. Yeah, I don't even know who they are. Yeah, they're. I think they're the second biggest, like right behind Machinima in terms. Really? Of, yeah. Or maybe I guess Maker is up there now too. Oh right? well, but, yeah, Maker, man. We'll see where Maker goes. <laughs> I, I have a feeling Maker's going to be a thing of the past. In like yeah, it's not looking good. A year. Maybe maybe half a year. Yeah. But we'll see. I can see that. Interesting. Let's move on to some game talk. Yeah, Excited buddy. Excited about that. I want to talk about Nintendo. No surprise to anybody, well, get out of here. anybody at home. <laughs> I have I, nothing so, to add. I know. You don't, you don't have any thoughts <laughs> on this. No, so I've been really excited to talk to you about Nintendo. So the Switch is now out. This must be the best time ever for Game Explain. It's like Christmas, man. Yeah, it's, it's like, dude, you've, you, you've been dealing with some shit for some time. <laughs> yeah, you know? Four years. Yeah. yeah Most yeah. of Game Explain's existence. Yeah. yeah, exactly. And it's like, but you persevered through it. And like, you were that beacon of hope for the people that actually still wanted to like the the games coming out for it right but now it's like they're giving you a shot and giving you things to actually be excited about how do you feel about that i'm feeling pretty good man it's it's good it's good to be excited again like having people be excited for a nintendo yeah. platform you know the sales figures just came out yesterday from nintendo they are super good for the switch at least in the u.s mm -hmm. i mean it's looking good um so there's an there's an aura right now surrounding nintendo that we haven't had in quite some time i feel like because there's even, hope there's hope exactly yeah, there's yeah. hope again yeah so yeah, I'm feeling good. Like I think Nintendo's Nintendo's doing good right now. I mean, I think E3 is going to be like that's the next big thing. That's going to yeah. be like this is going to be showing us like how Nintendo's set up for the future. Yep. Um, but for right now, I think Nintendo's Nintendo's doing pretty good. They're holding salt. They're holding steady. Um, and yeah, it's, it just feels good. Like it's, it feels good to be a, a Nintendo fan again, and we yep. haven't had that in some time. So I completely agree with you. I feel like we were all when the Switch commercial came out, like the the, uh, the launch commercial thing, right? Everyone was like, "Holy shit, this thing actually looks like it's everything that Yo, we want." Yo, she's playing it to on be. rooftop. That's awesome. Yeah, I can't wait for that. <laughs> um, but party. then when they announced the the Switch presentation in January, right? I built that up to be like, "This is going to be the thing that we've been waiting for." They so they've been fucking killing it. This killing is already three. Yeah. This is going to be the Nintendo being like, "Here, thanks for being patient with us." Right? Nope. <laughs> and, then and then it just totally wasn't. And like that hit me in a way of like, all right, I'm always going to be a fanboy to this stuff. I'm always going to get excited about right. this stuff. 
But is E3 going to be the thing that we want it I to mean, be? I mean, it may not be. I mean, it, here, yeah, here's the thing, right? When you're dealing with Nintendo fans especially, me included, um, there's always going to be like a level of hype there. I don't know if it's even possible to fully live up to consistently. Mm -hmm. So, but I feel like compared to how it's been in the past few years, you know, my, I, I think... I think there should be a reasonable level of hope right now for you know hope again. Like I, I think I I don't think it's unreasonable to expect better things than we've had in the past few mm -hmm. years. Um, but maybe again, maybe I get overhyped again. So we'll see. But I feel but, like the the hope will be at acceptable levels. Yeah. Because I do feel like that was the thing with the Switch review or like the trailer. We're like, holy shit! It, it's what we were hoping it was going to be. It's great. And then the presentation was a you know wind out of your sales moment but right. we got back on and I, I was really surprised people people were soured about the presentation got back on track, but they though. were still excited about the switch and then the switch came and we had it and we're all like oh fuck this is great and you, you know the haters in the outside oh it's a Zelda machine or whatever <laughs> but like that's really tapered off now I don't hear people saying that really and bitching about it and granted it's because there's a bunch of nindies I think coming out and like Mr. Mm -hmm. Shifty's rad but I think coming into E3 I think you'll have those kind of expectations, mm -hmm. the expectations that have not, not the sky high ones we thought for the crazy presentation, right. but more in the middle here of like, yeah. well, it's going to be a fire emblem and it's going to be the whatever, but maybe there will be a Metroid. Maybe there will be this. What is going to fill in the gap? Yeah, I, I think it's possible. I don't know. See, I think that with Nintendo, the there it, it, you'll never have tempered expectations. <laughs> it's Nintendo, it, it's always the like you do expect all of the things at once and I feel like you never get any of them so I feel like that list just kind of gets longer and longer and longer because it goes from like man I want the Metroid to man I want Metroid and F-Zero to man Donkey Kong Country hasn't been around for three years now sure. so it, and you start feeling like you're owed all of these yeah, things yeah my Stone Race FX2 where's that yeah. at <laughs> but I feel like too like I think the Switch so far has been a success and it's been a success also in the case of managed expectations I did buy this expecting, all right, cool, Zelda, Cart, Odyssey, mm -hmm, and then yeah. Graceful Explosion Machine, Mr. Shifty. I'm like, oh, shit, like these games are Snake Pass. This is awesome, and this is, I am struggling with that thing of, man, I love Persona 5, <laughs> but fuck, it'd be great on the Switch. Because it's Yeah. That's I exactly would love it. to play everything everywhere. That's how I want to play games because we're on the road so much. It, I mean, yeah, especially in your case, you're right. I mean, it's, it is kind of liberating. You can play this console anywhere yeah. and, you know, as a handheld and a console, and even even just treating it as a console, I found it, I mean, it's really convenient. Like, uh, just being able, like, I took it home a few weeks ago to Seattle yeah. to slam, just threw my bag, brought the dock with me. It's no hassle yep. at all. For the, the hotel rooms I'm in, sure. Dock yeah. there, HDMI, I'm yeah. playing. You got two yeah. controllers with you? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. We talked a little about a bit about this last week with Andrew and Renee, but the, the <laughs> direct that just happened and the last couple, if not directs, but presentations that Nintendo's done. So they, they did the, the January one, and then they did the Fire Emblem direct proper. And then after that, they did the Nindy's presentation, which was... Not called a direct, but it essentially was a direct. Right. And then they just did the most recent recent direct. Uh, that's kind of the new format going forward. Do you think that they're putting the right type of information out there and like uh, making the right announcements? For right now, for right now, I think they are. I mean, again, I think I think everyone realizes E three is going to answer a lot of our questions. Um, I think people, it you know, damn well better. Yeah, it better. That's it. I mean, so I think people understand they're not going to be making huge announcements at this point. And you know, one of the big questions right now is how is third party support going to be moving forward. Um, right now, that is a big question mark. We really don't know, uh, and hopefully, Ether will answer that. But I think for right now, I think they're focusing on what's working for them. I, you know, and working for us as gamers. Like I found, like I've, I'm playing more indie games now than I probably have ever before at any one time. Like there are a lot of games on there that are super hot, super easy to hop into, and uh, that are of high quality. Like. Uh, Snake Pass, um, Fast Racing, RMX. Like, oh, yeah, yeah. I'm hooked on that game. I saw your controller died, though, for the first time, right, while you're playing it? <laughs> like, three seconds from the finish line. I'm like, really? Come on. Like, <laughs> it, it gave me the warning. I'm like, all right, I should be good to get through the end of this race. Mm -hmm. It died, like, 30 seconds later on the final <laughs> on the final race of a circuit on, like, the hardest cup. I'm like, you suck. Oh, no. <laughs> but how long had that pro controller been charged? Oh, yeah, it was, like, 30 hours. I was going to say, <laughs> right? Like, <laughs> that thing's been going for quite a while. Yeah. That's awesome. So, to its credit, yeah. And I think that's why, like, people aren't bitter about the Switch right now is the fact that Zelda was fucking amazing, of course. You had to play it. People you are still playing it. Exactly. You, you can keep playing yeah. it. Yeah, it's in the one thing. But then there are cool experiences there, and we are right to cart, and we are going to get more crap, mm -hmm. and then it's going to be E3, and you hope that, yeah, this right. is where they say, here's a few more games of why you should be excited yeah. about this, what should happen with it. I mean, we talked about this ad nauseum, but I, I really... Once the expectations were set after the January presentation, it's like, all right, cool. What we're going to get is about once a month a, a big game from Nintendo. And now that we know the release dates of ARMS and um, Splatoon, Splatoon it's like we're missing May. There's not a big one in May, but we had, still playing won't matter. We had um, Zelda. We got Cart in April, then missing May. June, get ARMS. July, get Splatoon. 
hopefully E3 will announce a couple things for you know the months in between that and Mario Odyssey, which by the way, do you think Mario Odyssey is coming this year? I guarantee. I think I think it's definitely coming this year. Don't no 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 no. Don't be the internet commenter here. I'm not saying it's not. I was just saying. A lot of people say a lot of things. That's so like when I saw you getting all like it's guaranteed. I'm yeah. like, well, let's not go that far. All right, well, let's see. dial that back. I think I, think, I think I manage sure expectations. <laughs> I respect that. Yeah. The, the thing that's not guaranteed, I think, is Xenoblade. I don't think that's. Oh no, no, me neither. Yep. I, I think, think if chance. anything, it has a chance in Japan. But it hasn't even been announced. I agree with that. Uh, in for North America, uh, I think it has. I, I. I don't know. You know, I I'm no, not no, sure. no, it has. I'm pretty sure it has. But there's not a chance it's coming to North America this year. Yeah. Not I totally at all. agree. So But yeah. I mean the fact that they even announced that, it's like, all right, damn, that's pretty ambitious for uh the year one lineup, even though it's that's good. not necessarily what the Western audiences are clamoring for. That I mean that's it, right? Like it's a super good year one lineup by Nintendo standards. Mm-hmm. Super we're getting a, a, all their like most of the major franchises in uh in a year in a year, including their new fran- their new ones. Um but they're parties, right? Like yep. that's what Westerners really care about, or it seems that way. Uh, and there's, you know, there's still a huge lack of them. But so do you, you think, think they're we'll, ever going to come? Because I don't. I don't either. Yeah, I don't. I mean, not in not in the triple A sense. Yeah, well, I think I think my what I was talk, we did we used to talk about Switch all the time. Yep. But when we did the Lauren Landing episode, and he was arguing that that's a huge problem. Like I don't think it is because I I understand why it could be, but the Switch can't go the way of the Vita because. Nintendo can never be like, well, no AAA games again. No, so you're going to have all these nindies there that are doing it, and that's exciting, I would think, to smaller developers of, I make this game for the Switch, I can put it everywhere, but yeah, Ubisoft's not going to say, well, let's make a, you put this third-party weird game on there. And my thing with third parties is I think that when we're a couple years deep into the Switch's life cycle, I think that there's going to be a ton of really high-quality third-party games Mm -hmm. on the system. They're not going to be the Assassin's Creed. They're going to be the rumored uh, Mario Rabbids RPG crossover, right. right? It's gonna be stuff like that where it's like, um, it's they're more Nintendo, quote unquote, games, yeah. right? Yeah, Even yeah. if it's not Nintendo franchises, like uh, we're gonna get a lot of Square RPGs, yeah, like for sure. You can look at the 3DS and see its third party lineup, exactly. and kind of expect to see a more like beefy version of those, right? I mean, that's that is really the Switch's best saving grace, hopefully, is the fact that Nintendo is treating this as a true hybrid. This is a, the successor to not just the Wii U, but the 3DS. So Nintendo by themselves are entirely focusing on this platform, hopefully, uh, besides those new Kirby games they just announced. Well, so that's the thing, <laughs> is like, uh, I was, as a Nintendo fan, and as someone that thinks that I know how they should run their business. <laughs> right, we know best. Yeah. You run a successful business. <laughs> it's like when they started talking about all this fucking uh, 3DS <laughs> yeah. stuff, when they're like, Hyrule Warriors, and it, or not Hyrule, um, Fire Emblem Warriors, and it's also coming out to 3DS. I'm like, stop. Right, no. no. Quit it. Like, Cut we, it out. We don't need this. We don't fucking want this. Oh, here's, here's a Pikmin game coming, and oh, and here's a, like, a bazillion 3DS right. games that are still coming. It's like, you can stop, but then all of a sudden I'm like, all right, they need to have something to like that. There's an install base there. Yeah. They need to be making money because until there are switches in every household that they can get them into, there's only right now a million that are out uh, that were sold. In so that US, means, yeah. yeah, in the U.S., the only a million people in the U.S. have it. That's not enough when there's sixty whatever million with the exactly, 3ds. Yeah. I and mean, plus, I mean, there's that also hedging their bets that the switch did fail. Like they'd have the 3ds to fall back on in, mm-hmm. in the near term. So yeah, you're absolutely absolutely right. But it's like, but when does that end? You know, because I'm. Oh, I think. I mean, I think I'm now they're winding it down. Rope. Now they're like, oh fuck, we got it. All right, this thing's successful enough. I feel. I mean, Kirby games are kind of the ones you get at the end of a platform's life, yeah, right? Exactly. That's what killed the NES. But there's so many Kirby games now. <laughs> there are three of them. It's it's like <laughs> Kirby and Fire Emblem. They're just like, <laughs> just go. Take off. <laughs> fire everything. <laughs> yeah, it's fucking crazy. Like, I mean, I fucking love Fire Emblem, but I'm like, all right, guys. <laughs> Slow it down, right. <laughs> just a little. I mean, I'm super stoked for the Switch one, but like, I don't think I'm gonna touch the the 3DS one because I'm like, I Fates and and Conquest and Revelations were. I don't even. That was last year, right? Yes, yeah. Like, uh, it, it feels like it was. Yeah, I'm fire emblemed out for right now. Like, I'm I'm good. I don't need to to get another game just like that. I kept thinking the new one is like you know way later this year, but it's almost here. It's like yeah. how was there a new fire emblem already? Yeah. It's no, nah, that's that's gonna be nuts. But I. I'm interested to see, do they announce more 3DS games at E3? Because, like, that in a perfect world for me, I'm like, no. Like, th- these directs were to get those out of the way, and E3 needs to just be switch, 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 and go forward from there. You hope so. Yeah. But, yeah, that is the. I think it was great. They were future-proofing in a way, right? Mm-hmm. If it doesn't work out, we still have this. But Yeah, it's a third pillar of strategy. Yeah, so. yeah. How many more they still have up their sleeve? I don't know. So, got a line of question here for you. All right. Pokemon. 
Pokemon Stars. Is it real? I think it's real. I, I think it's definitely real. If you think it's real, when do you think it gets announced? When do you think it gets released? And does it also come to 3DS? That is, those are all great questions. I'm So I think it'll be announced this year. I don't think it'll be announced at E3. Pokemon typically aren't announced at E3. They're they? more of just like a random ass. It's a Tuesday. You, you, exactly, you can throw it at any time. 2 a.m. Does not matter. <laughs> That's going to blow up. Uh, so I think it'll be probably announced uh, after E3, maybe late summer, early this fall. Uh, hopefully, I mean, if it's a holiday title, that'd be great. I think, I mean, I'm guessing it would be at this point. So, yeah. um, and I would hope, I would hope it's Switch only. Like this is, this, I, if that's the case, this would be the true signal that Nintendo's treating this as their yep. next, ne- their next We're sing- all in. dedicated, yeah, they're all yeah, in. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I absolutely agree handle. with you there, man. Yeah. Cause it's like, if they also put this on the 3DS, it's going to sell super fucking well over yep. there, but that's that safety net that they need to remove if they want to really fully transition and have people believe that the this is now the console and the handheld and this is something that they should dedicate themselves to absolutely i mean on a similar line like it's kind of like the smash brothers thing with smash brothers 3ds and wii u i think that was absolutely the right decision to make at the same time i feel like wii u would have done better had it only come to wii u mm. they kind of uh you know kneecapped the wii u by re- by releasing the same game essentially on the 3ds first exactly that's right Bingo. yeah like, so they need well, to avoid that before again. right yeah i think just, six nuts. months before uh, three months what? before I don't even remember. Yeah. It, it, it was so long ago. It felt like it wasn't. <laughs> it felt like there wasn't that long between the two. But maybe, maybe there was. But so that's the other thing. Smash Bros. Yep. Ah oh, man. So I don't see it coming this year. So I would hope. But they they t- okay. They tend to announce Smash Bros. pretty far in advance. So I do think they may show it off at E3. I don't think it's coming this year though. We're already getting three big multiplayer games this year in the forms of Mario Kart, Arms, and Splatoon two. I don't think they could unload their their last biggest multiplayer game in the same year. Do you think that it's a port though? I think it's a port. I think, okay. it, I think, well, I say that loosely. I think it's going to be a port in the same vein 3DS and Wii U were. It's going to be a port of the Wii U version with some new characters, new stages, and hopefully more, you know, all the content of the 3DS. So is it stages. like the Mario Kart 8 Deluxe <laughs> yeah, type of basically, port? Yeah, basically, right. So Definitive Edition, whatever the fuck it's called. Ice Climbers? And then, yeah, Ice Better Climbers be. for sure. <laughs> and like maybe a character or two more. Yeah. Um, and then it, it, it comes out in. Uh, <laughs> Early, I, I could see the the somewhere between January and March yeah. next year. That totally makes sense to me. Now, looking at all of this, we know we're getting a whole bunch of Wii U ports. Most of them already announced. We're missing a couple. Smash, Mario Maker. Treasure Tracker. <laughs> treasure Tracker. It, Give like, me the, Treasure Tracker. <laughs> my thing with Captain Toad is I almost feel like they would just make a new one. Okay. On the Switch. I'd allow yeah. that. I'm, I'll allow that, Mr. <laughs> Nintendo. Yeah. Like, I, I just, I feel like that's the type of game that, like, at that point, porting that, it is a little bit like, wow, you were I just, really I mean, just I understand. I agree with you. It's just Treasure Tracker, a great game that so many people missed. Absolutely. It's true. Yeah, that's a good point. And I do think it's Easy small enough, game. though, that they can just mm-hmm. make make more. Like, yeah, make, no, I make, a, make a sequel. And, like, I mean, kind of like Splatoon 2, where it's just like, it, it, everyone thought it was a port. And is it a port? No, it's a new game. But it's like, really, it's not like that much of a, a, <laughs> yeah, yeah. a an increase, right? And I think Captain Toad could be the same thing. But so we're dealing with all the ports. We're running out of things that I think that they would port on Wii U besides Smash, Mario Maker, and that's probably it. That's I mean, that's a big question, right? Like, they're, they're already, well, just in general, in terms of their own IPs, they're burning through them pretty quick. Yeah. Like, they're working their way through these at so a rapid pace. So if they were to do that, we get those. Let's assume that they do announce a Mario Maker for Switch and a Super Smash Bros. for Switch. Those come out, I, we would imagine, all before June next year. Then what do they do? Because if they've already had their Mario Kart and Smash, because if you're going to port them over, do we expect to get Mario Kart 9 and the next Super Smash Bros. in this console's <laughs> life cycle? Yeah, so Mario Kart I could see. Smash Brothers. I think this will be a one. I think Switch, I think Switch version will be it. Um, I, I mean, I think I think it will be more than just a. I think it'll be more of a definitive version than the Mario Kart 8 is. I think they will they will pump it up enough that it will feel like kind of its own. It'll feel like a new game. Exactly. Yeah. 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 Um, so yeah, I think Smash will be good. Mario Kart could definitely see another one, especially because they are keeping the exact branding. Like I figure for Smash, it'll be Super Smash Brothers Switch. Yep. Like absolutely. This, just like Wii U and 3DS. Mm-hmm. But Mario Kart, they're very clearly sticking to this is Mario Kart 8, just with a little bit more content. Um, so yeah, I definitely expect another Mario Kart um, in this generation. How long till another Mario Golf? That man, you know, it's it hasn't been that long since the last one, and but yet, it was DS been, or 3DS. But I mean, it was 3DS. Let's get I don't really even count it, but it wasn't that good. So, oh, uh, what <laughs> the, the 88 hours disagree. Oh my god, <laughs> that was amazing. Oh, you know, the best part was sitting there every morning playing with Mitch. 
We had a golf tea time every day. <laughs> now you can do it with the Switch. Tim, we could do it with the Switch. We oh, could. Man. We could. I do want a new Mario Golf though. Like yeah. I, I love the 64 on GameCube one. Oh, yeah, so, of course. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I just need. I need. I need my cinematic opening, man. I need my. Yeah. I need the context. Yeah, I understand. Why, I need why the, are they golfing? I need the right, story. What's happening? Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What's going on? <laughs> now I need I'm, a golf bad and I need an Animal Crossing bad. Oh, oh that's Animal Crossing. Great, yeah. yeah. I man, I feel like that would be a perfect December title this year, but I don't think that's going to happen. No, I think no, this year, year yeah, no I, I, mean, I feel like this, that'd be too stacked. I don't think it'd be. I, I think if, they, if Xenoblade ends up not coming out this year, I think that'd be a perfect mm. filler instead. I don't think it's happening though. I do think it'll come next year. Yeah, and yeah. that is going to be huge. Yeah, a portable console Animal Crossing that is going to be nuts. Like that and Pokemon, I feel like will really kind of steal the deal on the Switch. Exactly, and I, I think that <clears throat> we're getting to the point where it's like that. The first year they're doing a good job with enough solid games to at least get them sold mm -hmm. but it's like you you don't drop the, the big bombs until there's units out there so that people buy it and that's why i think they need to get pokemon stars out exclusively on switch asap right like this year so that they can start working on the next gen if they haven't already started working on the next gen of pokemon uh so that when they release that it is to an audience big enough to sell the amount of units the Pokemon sells and we, we've seen it even on the 3ds anytime there's a pokemon game core pokemon game mm -hmm. The, it's going to be in the top 10 on NPD every fucking month, you know? Forever, yeah. Forever. <laughs> yeah. And the the other thing to keep in mind about Nintendo titles is they never drop in price. They don't. Ever. No. So if you keep the, the high adoption rate that they got right now with the Switch and you keep those games, they're going to be making a lot of money off that shit. I mean, I think it's going to be a fascinating holiday season for them. Because even right now, let's say E3, they announce a lot of stuff, but it's still holiday season. It's beyond holiday season, I should say. And, you know, Odyssey is what we get or whatever. Like, by the time you get there, the fires are being stoked mm -hmm. so consistently right now, right? You're telling that story about the barbershop yesterday, where, like, they was, like, a normal-ass barbershop with normal people. They were like, Best Buy's got switches. Really? And everybody, like, panicked yeah, yeah. and, like, dude, tried to run dude, out. Some dude next to me that was getting his hair cut was like, hey, um... If I were to leave right now and get it, could I come back? And then the the barber was like, "Sorry, I'm I have, I'm booked all day. I can't it's, do it." it it's like, not. Ah. It's he was not a mid haircut. Get <laughs> it's not seat. fever pitch by any means. Like we was when my no. mom wanted it after Thanksgiving. But I think by the time you get to Christmas and you like, we've all been talking so positively about this in the year, and they, if they can get them on shelves, it's and a like slow they, burn. Yeah. Exactly. I really think they're going to sell a ton of units, and that's when the door really opens up for next year and the you know that next calendar year of 2018 to really have these games. That that's what's what's really scary to me is that. Let's say they do all that stuff and Nintendo's back, quote unquote. Like I, it's hard to look at what 2018 even could look like. And 2019, it's like yeah. when they've done so much of their franchises this year, like especially dropping a major Zelda and a major Mario yeah. in the same year. Like holy shit, that's crazy. You know, and yeah, my two favorite IPs within ten months of each other, nine months, and that that's gonna be crazy. So then the the question becomes like, all right, maybe they'll have a couple new IP. They probably will in, the, in di like the range of the arms is or the splatoons right. is and whatever. Real quick, sir, do you believe in arms? I, I'm a believer. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I, I had I had fun with it in January. So I'm I, the thing I'm hesitant on is like how how much replayability does it have? That's one thing I'm a little bit unsure of. But I, I hell off on with it. I, I make fun of it every time Tim talks about it. But then he's always like, it's fun. I had fun. <laughs> yeah. it, it looks dumb. I mean, I'll sure admit it. Look, it looks silly, but it's it's fun. And that's the thing. As somebody who hasn't played it, I'm just you know. I mean, shit, Spl but. Splatoon had a kind of similar thing, right? You see yeah. that it's like that's weird, and then <laughs> yeah. you play it like this is awesome. This is really fun. So how how successful is Splatoon two going to be? You think? I think it'll be huge. Yeah. I think, especially in Japan. Um, I think I think it'll be big here. I think it'll be huge in Japan. Um, and it's, yeah, I think this the way the Switch is is going to benefit Splatoon two so much. We were talking about this yesterday mm -hmm. of like you, life to you know in the grand scheme of things, it a lot. I, we think it a lot sell Splatoon one. I think it's that the fact that you have lapsed Nintendo fans like me, right, who actually feel a connection to the system for the first time since I guess sixty four, really. Wow. Well, yeah. And it's like. I, I didn't give Splatoon the time of day on Wii U because I just did not like my Wii U. And, but I heard I've, Fran never shuts up about it. Perry <laughs> really? never shuts wow. up about it. Oh, yeah, they love it. And so, like, it's coming out, and I'm like, well, yeah, there's not that much going on. There's other games, don't get me wrong, but, like, mm -hmm. this is a AAA Nintendo yeah. one. So, yeah, I'll, I'll play this on a plane. I'll see what the hell's all about. And, like, and that's, that's kind of uh, what I keep going back to is I do feel like with the Switch and, when, like, yesterday or last week on the games cast with and we recorded <laughs> these in a weird order <laughs> uh when we were looking at all the wii u top selling titles like it was interesting to know that 13 million wii u sold and the top 10 there was so many that were like above 2 million yeah. sold which yep. is a great attach a rate. great attach rate when you compare it to a, a system like the ps4 that sells way 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 more but it's top selling games aren't you know statistically near the same thing and i i wonder that 
if the Switch can kind of pull that off on a bigger scale, and if their release schedule is less dry than the Wii U's was, then I think that a lot of people will be like, you know what, I'm going to give ARMS a shot. I'm going to buy ARMS. 100%. And I'm also going to buy Splatoon. And that adoption rate could just stay. That's the thing That's of like, right. I mean, what it's the exact same argument everybody made and I made and developers made about the Vita, where people who owned a Vita bought Vita games. And sure, there's a bunch of people outside who are like, oh, Vita's dead, blah, blah, blah. But it was this like constant stream of indies that kept you engaged. Mm-hmm. And then, and that's without, I mean, I'm talking about the end of its life cycle, without having a AAA game. So to have it be that like every, if they can do it, like right now, it's every week, it seems like there's another great fucking indie game out. Even yeah. if that tapers off and slows down, it's still going to be enough that you're turning on your Switch, you're thinking about your Switch, you're packing your Switch. And then, yeah, it's going to be that, well, fuck yeah, arms is that, why not? I don't, I don't want to do this. And then it is the fact of carts here, and now I can fucking play Mario Kart 8 on the TV, and I can go to PAX, and I can sit in the beanbags and have people gather around me and fuck around with their Switches and play. Like, that's the game changer for me. It really is. Yeah, it's... And the Switch almost feels like a Trojan horse in some ways because you want to take it with... You want to take a place so that people can play, like, Mario Kart with you, for instance. But, like, while you're playing it, hey, why not show you something else? I mean, I've shown you otherwise. Like, all these other games you have right on the system with you. Yeah. It's, like, it just feels like a really good way to... It just feels like a very shareable console. Like, mm-hmm. it, I mean, it's it's not as explicitly social as a Wii was, but it it kind of is, in a way. So, like, yeah. even my dad is, like, playing Zelda. He does not play games yep. at all, and he was super engrossed by it. And that's the, I mean, like, there's so many little things that I think are really smart about it that seem stupid at first. Like, the Joy-Cons and how, I'm like, oh, these ugly little things. But it's like, release a cool color. Yeah, I'll buy it. And then, right? I, then I have another controller. Yep. And then it is, hey, come over and play cart. Oh, oh yeah, I guess I have four controllers. You <laughs> yeah. be this. I'll put them in the Joy-Con grip. We'll do all these different things. Like, there's all these weird little ways around it where it's like, it actually incentivizes me to, yeah, I'll buy another Joy-Con. Sure, you put out a cool color. Right. It's kind of evil in a way, almost. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Taking my 80 bucks every day. <laughs> <laughs> so, Mario Odyssey. Stoked. The next big question. Do you think that it will do to Mario what Breath of the Wild did to Zelda? Dude, I hope so. Like I've been, I've been saying for years, I want a return to the Mario sixty four style of gameplay, and it seems like that's what we're getting. Like mm-hmm. they straight up said in the reveal, like we're going back to Mario sixty four and Sunshine. The thing is, though, for me, I always find that like a little bit weird because a lot of people like equate those two games together. Whereas for me, like I thought those two games couldn't be more different at the time. Really? Because Mario sixty four was truly open. You go into a world, you have like ten things you can do. Go off, do what you want. Sunshine kept the same size of the worlds. But gave it to only do one objective at a time. So that's where I felt like they, that, mm. that's what started the path down the more linear route they went. And to be fair, I ended up loving those games too. Galaxy I love. Um, Absolutely. 3D Land and 3D World are fine games. Um, Other but, major difference, don't forget, is that 64 was good and Mario <laughs> Sunshine sucked. Yeah, but I mean, I, I wouldn't, mean, I would not go that oh, far. Man. But I mean, you're right. 64 is better, like way better. <laughs> not even a fucking question. Better. I'm on the same page as Greg here. Yep. <laughs> Thank God, so, Colin doesn't work so, here anymore. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, with, with Sunshine, like, yeah. what, what was it that you didn't like about it? I felt like it was, it was too much. It didn't feel Mario enough for me. I think. I mean, it, part of it was like it was a step back from 64. Where I thought 64 did so well, but the whole flood thing. Mm-hmm. Um, I didn't like the controls for flood. I didn't like what it added to the game. I thought it took away from the game. The best parts of that game were when you didn't have flood. And it was yep. so good. And yeah. that is, you can totally see where the 3D land, 3D world, galaxy exactly. style came Absolutely. in. I fucking love that. Yeah, shit. those were great. Like, I, yeah, I mean, you're right. They basically built whole games around that. Um, the camera was terrible. Yep. Uh, I didn't think, and the presentation was god awful. The voice acting. Oh, the, yeah. My yeah. thing was the hub world, Delfino Island. That was cool. It, it, it was cool, but it never gave. I mean, the, the castle is just so perfect. I mean, that's you know, true, yeah. and it's like that is why what I I hope that one day we go back to. Like I remember in Mario Galaxy One, like the thing I liked least about it was the the comet observatory or whatever the fuck it was called. The just the hub world yeah, of, no, you got of it, Galaxy, yeah. and it was just like this is really boring and it is totally there's i'm going up different levels yep and like there we are and run me more of like crash bandicoot just like <laughs> you're in this hub well you, well, you should have loved it then right <laughs> oh, no, I, fucking, I love crash but i mean like <laughs> you don't want crash in your mario right yeah, yeah. Com- comparing like peach's castle to <laughs> the warp room and fucking crash is like uh Th- that's kind of interesting like mario galaxy is one of my favorite mario games i love those games but the hub i agree wasn't that great in that game yeah um and mario galaxy 2 basically did away with the hub entirely which was i thought a great idea because they're like you know what we can't do better let's just fucking get them into the game like i i agree like i thought that was a good idea like i wish there were a great hub but the fact that they the fact what they, i mean what they had worked and i was yeah. fine with it so yeah. so with um odyssey like i I think, and I, I was talking about this a couple months ago on the show, that I think that Galaxy was the Breath of the Wild of the Mario franchise, where it's like, in terms of three, the 3D platformer versions of it. Different, like, different direction, where, you mean? Or? Uh, just in terms of, like, the... Mario is about 
the physics and how it feels, okay. right? And I think that. that Galaxy adding the gravity was a game changer in the way that opening Zelda was. Right, I gotcha. So I don't know that Mario Odyssey can have that like same type of effect on, on people, but I do think that if they nail the 64 vibe, that that will be the biggest success Nintendo could ever have. I don't know that they can do that, though. It's tough. I mean, I think, like, when I saw the trailer, the new Mario Odyssey trailer, I don't think I've been that excited for a game, I, maybe since maybe since Mario Galaxy. I'm like, yes, that is what I want. Like, that that was magical. Like, that made me feel like a kid again. Um, not even Breath of the Wild, like, got me that excited. And I was super stoked for Breath of the Wild. So, I I mean, I'm with you. If they can hit this, if they, nailed, if they hit this out of the park, this could be huge. Um, you know, I don't know if they'll do it yet, but... It looks like it could be a so return far. to like what 64 was and what the, that feeling was of exploring that world and finding secrets and how different environments were. Yeah. That's gonna be fucking impressive, let alone the fact that like if they can hit it and make it be what we think we remember 64 being, right? Yeah. I mean, that, that, <laughs> and that's kind of, and that, I mean, that kind of brings up a good point too, or a secondary point is this is following Breath of the Wild now. Yeah. We've already had like Mario 64 when it came out was a breath of fresh air because it was it was open it was yeah. huge it was 3d we've had that before now we just had uh the biggest version of that in breath of the wild so it is going to be weird that we're having a mario come out in the same vein as mario 64 which i feel like was almost a predecessor to breath of the wild yeah so i don't know in some ways could it be a step back perhaps mm -hmm. it's i mean it's, it's a different focus of course it's a platforming absolutely sure. but yeah and i mean that's the thing, even the 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 sonic 06 looking level where they're they're in the in new, whatever what's it called new donk city <laughs> new, new donk city, city new yeah. donk city uh, i it, it's like seeing the trailer it is super cool seeing him kind of like be all acrobatic and around the the real looking world uh but it's i'm interested in the platforming aspects of it because yeah. when you're in the city it's like you're you level design it needs to be designed in a way to make it fun to traverse it right yeah. and like i i think that with the mario 64 that was the, the least entertaining part of the game was the platforming of it. It was way more about exploring it was. That's everything. True. And I think that we've gotten between Galaxy 1 and 2, 3D Land, 3D World, we've gotten so much like perfect platforming that this is totally just going to be the bigger exploration things. But then with games like Ukulele and like uh, all, all that recently where it is a bit more of the collect-a-thon explore, I don't know. I'm I'm really interested. I, there's no game I'm more excited for than Odyssey, but there's no game that I, I think might disappoint me more than Odyssey. Right. Especially now that we are coming off the ukulele. I know some people are loving that game. I was a little bit let down by it. I had I, I haven't played it. I mean, I've I done the, the I, I've done I've I went through Nick's Let's Play with him and then did a Draft House Let's Actually, Play. Yeah, watch too. that. That's right. Yeah, and so like I think I don't think this is gonna have the same problem because I think ukulele's problem was it was too traditional. Mm -hmm. Whereas already having New Donk City and doing these different things, I think they're gonna understand where they need to take Galaxy and they need to take sixty four and find this middle ground mm -hmm. or combine them and mm -hmm. make make a beautiful baby. I don't think it's gonna be the same. <laughs> the text popping up I'm like right. all right well this is exactly what it, I think they're going to nail how to platform around that city I think the city will, is yeah. going to be designed that way to make you want to wall jump and feel like you've achieved something get up yeah. there it looks take like off a, your yeah. hat and wipe your brow it's a jungle gym right yeah or, yeah. yeah yeah yeah, I just hope, because I'm saying, like, Mario 64, one of my favorite games of all time, it is one of the few games that I go back to and play, like, it's every couple of years, yep. and it is still fun, but when you play through it, like, there's a lot of things where I'm like, oh, man, like, it is a chore to uh, play Rainbow Cruise, right, and I try to 100% the that level, because the camera works so against <laughs> you, because that is one of the few platforming levels That's true. In, in the whole, in in that game. And it stands out versus the, you know, any, the lethal lava land or the more like open one, like, um, all, all shifting sand land. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Like, so we'll see. Very excited about that. The big questions of the franchises, Metroid, F zero, Star Fox. Are we going to see any of these and when? Star Fox, no. I think Met oh, yeah, Metroid. I mean, it depends what Retro's doing. If I think we will see Retro's game. If it's Metroid, wait, you see, E3? E3. Okay. Yeah, yeah, sorry. Um, but so I don't, I actually have no idea if it's Metroid or not. If they're not working on it, I don't think we'll see Metroid. Wow. Yeah. That's crazy. <laughs> the time's come. You're getting a Metroid. Yeah, I mean, it, so it will what's, come, what's yeah. funny is it's like, and again, it's Nintendo and it's hype and all that, but I feel like the, oh, we're going to see Retro's game at E3 this year. I've heard that for four years, you know? <laughs> and so it's just like, they. this is the year that they better. If I, we I, don't know what Retro's working yeah, on, like that is going to be gotta a big know. This has got to be the thing. This is yeah. it. And if it's Metroid, do you think that it's a prime reboot or... It wouldn't be a re I don't think it'd be a reboot. Um, I don't know if it'd be a true sequel either, but I don't think we'll get a reboot. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I do want. I mean, I want a. I do want a Prime style 3D game though. Like, 
I mean, it's hard. Like, I felt like Metro Prime was one of my favorite games. Um, I thought the sequels were good, but they, were, they weren't as good as the first. So the question is, is how do they do what the, made the first one great again without coming across as too much of the same? Mm-hmm. So, I mean, it's, it, it, you know, it's kind of like Mario and Zelda. Like, how do you reimagine this yeah. without going full reboot, I feel like? But I think they announced your Metro game at E3. And then I think they also, and it's coming next year, 2018, whatever they say. Maybe don't even say a date. And then I think some between then and now, more imminently, you'll get a Prime on Switch. That either if it's through eShop or if it's some kind of re-release thing. Oh, okay. One of the OG ones. Yeah. So with the interesting thing with the Switch being the console <laughs> and the handheld is that means if they do get rid of the 3DS, there's two markets of games where there's the hand, traditionally handheld games and traditionally console games. We're just talking about the console ones. Do you think that we'll get... Uh, a a top down, more traditional, old school Zelda, or a two D Mario game, or a two D Metroid game. I, I think we definitely will. The next Zelda, I think, will will I think it probably will be a two D game. So because I don't think they can deliver another Breath of the Wild style game anytime soon, and yeah. they want to keep Zelda going. The question though is, yeah, I think we will still get those smaller scale games like for the three DS. How do you do they charge full price for those now, or do they charge what they would have on 3DS? Mm. Like because they, people are going to compare the next 2D Zelda to Breath of the Wild. Uh, like, why is it 60 bucks as well? When it, yeah. I think they'll they'll charge the 3DS prices for you those. Think so? Yeah, and that'll kind of set the case of what's happening, right? Like, yeah. this is not meant to be Breath of the Wild. This right. is not meant to be Mario Odyssey. These are games that are smaller experiences. Yeah. I mean, there's smaller. a precedent already with the One Two Switch and yeah. Super Bomb, which is still all, overpriced. Though. It is over. <laughs> it's way fucking overpriced. Yo, milk a cow. But, but it is, you know, cheaper than the the sixty dollars games. Yeah. So, man, I'm very excited about this. I hope that they knock it out of the park with E3. I am very scared that they're not going to because if they don't now, it's a constant fear. It's just it's then I'm just like, all right. Then I man. think it's going to be a solid fun E3. I'm not setting my expectation. Now, granted, again, I'm not in the sh- in the shit like you Nintendo <laughs> fans are. I think it's going to be a good one where it's going to be similar to like a PSX where Adam Boys is like, we're going to announce a lot of stuff, and I hope that two or three of the announcements apply to you and yeah. two or three of the other announcements apply to you, and I think that's how it's going to be. Mm-hmm. I think they'll have three tent poles in there that get you super excited with stuff in the middle, and one of them better be Mario Golf. <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're not getting Mario Golf at E3. Oh you're just God. you're just simply. Can't they, what if it's just Reggie and he puts and he's like, "Don't worry, we're coming." And then he's <laughs> yeah. like, maybe, on. maybe, but that that'll be the the max of it. He's wearing a little Mario golf lapel. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> yeah. All right, the final topic of the day, as always, it's brought to you by you. You can go to kindofunny.com slash gamescast topic and leave a topic for us to discuss, just like all these beautiful people did. Ghost Burglar wants to know, "Hey, what's up with your endless love and passion for Mario Sunshine? We talked oh about God, it a little why, bit earlier. Why would you do this to me?" <laughs> <laughs> so, like, I mean, do you have beef with this game? So, <laughs> I don't know about beef. I mean, the beef I have now is that uh, just all the feedback I get for not liking the game. I mean, it's just, I mean, I'm a huge Mario fan. So, when I play Mario Sunshine, like the, the successor to Mario 64, the first Mario game on GameCube, and it, I didn't think it was very good. It it's didn't just feel like a Mario game. That was, that it. was it always like the point. Game. It just yeah. felt like, all right, I have this weird. Pl- I mean, it's not a bad game. I'm, you know, I, yeah. I just call last topic. I said it sucked. It doesn't suck, but it's like it doesn't feel like a Mario game. Yeah. It feels like I'm Mario in somebody else's game, and I'm doing Mario e things. Yeah, totally that, it. that's weird to me because to me it does feel like a Mario game because to me a Mario game just means it feels very tight. Every, everything I do feels like it's happening on screen when I'm doing it with the controller. And I think that Flood controlled well. Uh, I think the mechanics of having to constantly refill your water sucked. <laughs> like, I think that like they could have uh, changed that up a bit. And I think that the level designs got a little bit trite when it was the same kind of vacation feel for every single level. Mm-hmm. And there was way... Uh, Less levels than there was in in even sixty four. Yeah, I think like half the amount. Sixty four had fifteen. Sunshine had six, seven, I think. Six or six, seven. seven. I yeah. mean, like that's that's ridiculous because even sixty four didn't have that many levels. You yeah, know? it's true. Uh, it's Kevin's favorite Mario game. Yeah, but Kevin's an idiot. <laughs> yeah, it's true. Well, I mean, favorite three D. Yeah. Sorry, yeah, which is, he didn't play the Galaxy games. I don't know so that's so he, like, he doesn't even. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's like I don't, I don't hate Sunshine straight up. I think one. I, thought, I think one question that I saw. Was uh, would you rather play Mario Paper Mario Sticker Star or Sunshine? I mean, I'd rather play Sunshine. Yeah, so I can have fun with Sunshine. I had no fun with Paper Mario Sticker Star. Yeah, so. yeah, no. <laughs> the the thing that is interesting to me about Sunshine is Nintendo. It, the reason it feels like a Mario game to me, and it feels like a Nintendo game, is during the GameCube generation. They just went fucking bonkers. That's true. And Luigi everything Mansion. everything needed to be a little bit different. Like I'll never forget uh, this because this is back in the day of magazines for me. EGM. It was the the post. 
was it Space World or was it post E3? I don't, I don't even know if they did Space World that year. But uh, where on the cover it was Link, Samus, and Mario. Mario had Flood. Samus was from Prime, and Link was Wind Waker Link. And I was just like, holy shit, <laughs> we're getting all three of these things. The first Metroid game since Super Metroid, and it's a first-person shooter, question mark? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. Mario has this weird fucking water gun. He's going to do graffiti with it. What? The, or like clean graffiti? Like, what the fucking hell? And then Zelda. It's like, oh, it's a, it's a cartoon? It's not that that sweet-ass CG tech demo right, thing we saw. Right, <laughs> like, right, like right. what? But it was like, that was Nintendo's thing then. You know, it was like everything had to have some weird gimmick. And yeah, Luigi's Mansion. It's like, we're going to launch the GameCube with a Mario game, except it's not about Mario. It's about <laughs> Luigi, and he's a Ghostbuster. It's like, All right. Mario. Mario. <laughs> Well, that was uncanny, man. Yeah. <laughs> I love Actually, Luigi's Mansion. <laughs> yeah, yeah, where's, where's Luigi's Mansion 2 on uh, Switch? Yeah, or exactly. Yeah, yeah. Don't well, do this DS stuff. Yeah, right. Give me a real one now. Yeah, it was, I liked I it. Was, liked, I sorry. played it, too. I'm not Dark, saying it wasn't Dark, bad. It wasn't bad. It wasn't bad. I'm but saying it wasn't, wasn't the original, Luigi's yeah. Mansion. So, I mean, that's how I feel about Mario Sunshine, right? Like, I get, I like it when Nintendo does different stuff. But I also like that stuff to be really good. Mm. Mario Sunshine just didn't quite hit it for me. Like, it did some things well. Mario himself controlled great, I thought. The flood controls I weren't, I weren't too happy with. Um, but yeah, I think they missed the market in enough ways that it it disappointed me. I feel like it kind of it kind of feels like to me how Yooka like if you told me Yooka Lily was Banjo Kazooie three and just threw Banjo Kazooie in there, mm. that is how I felt about Mario Sunshine. Mm. That's Mario Sunshine was the Yooka Lily of its time. <laughs> 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 um, <laughs> Moving on, <laughs> Stephen. Steven says, ask him what he thinks about the memes about the video lengths of his analysis and discussions, please. <laughs> Oh man, um, I mean, I think it's funny. Like, I, I mean, yeah, we, we make we make long videos. Like, it, it's so funny to me that people get so upset about it because it's just like, dude, if if you're not the audience for this, I'm unfamiliar. What's the what's the memes? Well, I mean, it, people are just like, oh, there was like in the January presentation for Nintendo, there yeah. was what six seconds of Mario Odyssey footage. Only made a ten minute video. Ah, like, uh, not even the January okay. thing. The, yeah. the original Switch reveal trailer. Gotcha, gotcha. And gotcha. they did an analysis video that was like. How long? <laughs> but it's like you need to talk about things. Talking yeah. takes time, you know. Yeah. Like even if you're talking about three screenshots, like I mean, the thing, the only thing that gets to me is when people like accuse us of purposely making longer videos. It's like, are you kidding me? I hate making longer videos. Like the longer <laughs> this is, the longer it takes me to make. I wish I could just crank these out, and, like bust them right yeah, out. Yeah, we can make up. a yeah, formatted yeah. video. That'd be awesome. But I'm tr trying to condense everything we can into this time. Um, and it usually ends up, you know, it ends up being the length that it is. We just, you know, we are just very particular about what we cover. So yeah. it ends up working out that way. We also have our discussions, which do go on for a little while too. It's just, we're passionate. Like there's when you're passionate about something, there's a lot to talk about. If you're not passionate about, it, I can see why it would come off as like you know what are they even talking about? Like it's yeah. nothing. But like I can talk, you know, you can talk. Like if you look at Smash Brothers, right? Uh, to to a layman, those games all look the same. If you play them, you can tell there are huge differences between them. And exactly. you can talk about those differences for a while. And I Smash Bros, obviously, one of my favorite franchises of all time. But one of my favorite things about it is the hype train leading up to it. And I loved that for both Melee, or not Melee, for Brawl and for the, the Wii U and uh, 3DS one, they would do the thing where every night, every weeknight, you got something new. Yep. And in Brawl, it was way more like it was always a new feature or a new character or something. For the Wii U and 3DS ones, it was always a screenshot. Once a day, you get a screenshot. But the screenshots would reveal so much. <laughs> so we got to a point at IGN where I would do like recap videos of it. Of here's all the things we learned this week from the five screenshots. And there's so much to go through. Where it's like, yeah. here's this item which is from this game, and here's what we think it might do. And it's like that shit's so interesting to me. So I think you're doing God's work. Uh, but do I want to go this? I appreciate that. <laughs> what, what a surprise! People on the internet want to tear down something <laughs> someone else makes. What? <laughs> Let's see here. Um, we already kind of talked about that. So this is an interesting question okay. that uh, we keep being asked. And I'm just going to keep asking until a guest <laughs> oh, has Jesus an opinion God. about it. This I'm comes afraid. from this comes from more saying. He says, "Does he think Armored Core should become a phenomenon like From Software's other series, The Souls Games?" Oh, this is gonna be a quick one. I've not played either of those. Exactly. So. <laughs> Absolutely. Every this every dude, time we have a guest, he asks about Armored Core. This dude fucking wants. To, he just wants someone is to it, care you say about Armored Core. You say it's more. I always I, I used to always say more Scion like. Uh, like he's going super scion or super scion. Sa it's saying. Saying. I think it's oh, scion. So I've yeah. been saying scion wrong. This <laughs> I hate whole time. you so much. Yes. I mean, it kind of sounds that, cooler though. But that's from Pokemon, right? When you <laughs> hit the when Charmard hits the <laughs> level. Charmard. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, speaking of Pokemon, we we missed this a couple of topics yeah. ago. When do you think? What do you think the next Pokemon game is going to be after Stars? Oh, after Stars. Um, I, I think it's going to be the uh, the reboot of was it fourth gen now or. 
God, I'm not. I'm not. Too, I'm not good. That's Pokemon. Yeah. No, generation. it would be like, fourth. Fourth. Yeah. yeah. Diamond. I think. And I think that's what's gonna be next. I think we're already kind of. Really think so? I think it is. Oh, I don't want that. You don't want that? No. But we just got Sun and Moon. Like I know th- that's the problem though. Is like I feel like there needs to be a turn. I. They need to do something, yeah. and there needs to be a turnaround. And I think that I know that this is the most G one or thing to possibly fucking say, but like I really think that they should make Pokemon Red and Blue too, and it should be a console Pokemon game. It should be what people want, you know, not the MMO. <laughs> I think that's a little too ambitious. Yeah. But give them the, a real console Pokemon game and make it as familiar to the most people as possible. So okay, well, when you say red and blue, what do you mean by that exactly? Like you just I want mean, the original one fifty one? Well, I mean Kanto, like the the, oh, the, region. the region, and I want it to be like I mean a sequel in the same way that black and white had black and white two instead of being the the third thing. Yeah. I think that instead of like constantly remaking the gens, which they could go forever for that, right? It's just the cycle. I do think that they do need to just go back to what the most people care about. Pokemon Go is a perfect example yep. of that, and I think that even if it was getting it back to the one fifty one, I don't think that that's that bad of an idea. You know, I, I, man, I'm gonna come across this whole Gen One or now too. Like, I'm, I'm with you. Like, I'm actually not that big of a Pokemon guy. I, I love Gen One. I played the shit out of that in school. Like, every day we'd be, you know, we'd trade our Pokemon or whatever. Uh, ever since uh, Gold and Silver, though, I kind of fell off the Pokemon train. Like, each one just felt like more of the same, and it, you know, you have that checklist of Pokemon to get through. I'm like, I don't know if I want to do this anymore. Like, this is just work at this point. Catch all this freaking <laughs> Pokemon. Um, and it's almost daunting at this point now. Like, there's what, 700 Pokemon? Yeah. More, maybe more? Uh, so I think maybe kind of rebooting it in a way, going back to Red and Blue, Kanto, making it for a console, like, full 3D, like, just re-envision that world, like, almost like the anime, right? Like, yeah. Like, blow it up. That, I mean, I'd be on board with that. I, I, I cool. just, I think that that would be, I mean, Pokemon's fine. Like, they don't need my advice on, on how to sell their <laughs> they games. They know what they're doing. They yeah, they, it, yeah, that's like the one of the few franchises I'm like, they're good. I mean. But I just feel like to the to the the people that they, they may have lost as the hardcore guys. Like, because I'll always be a huge Pokemon fan, but it's like, I'm not, I always get called out with people like, Tim says he's a, a huge fan. He doesn't even fucking like this. It's like, you, I mean, you know honestly, how I'm going super science. Uh, yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> with so much science. You are kind of right though. Like coming, following up with that after Pokemon Go, like now's the time to do it. Like, yeah. You want to bring back that, that market you just expanded into, bring them back mm-hmm. with a remake of the originals. Yep. But I mean, let's be real here. I don't, I don't, I don't think a remake of the originals. I think a reboot. A like, reboot. I, yeah, like, I'd agree with they've that. They've already remade, remade it. I do think that it'd be a little egregious if they did it again. Yeah. I mean, what they, I mean, it doesn't matter, though, because what they really need is a Pokemon Snap 2. Yes! <laughs> yes, they do. If we Thank didn't get you. that on the Wii U, I don't know that we're going to get it. The perfect console for right? it. Like, the one game Come that was on, made for the gamepad. The one game. And instead, it is... Oh, Star Fox Zero instead. Oh, like, no, Star Fox Zero is a gamepad oh, game. <laughs> like, that, that is... It's the most upsetting enemy ever. Well, because I, I Star cry Fox, nightly about it. Star Fox 64 is one of my top games of all time. I fucking love that franchise. Um, Star Fox Assault, despite its flaws... The on in air things were freaking. Awesome. It has some awesome ideas, and the story of it for Star Fox, I loved it. It was, it felt like a sequel to sixty four, and then they just kept going off the deep end with all of the fucking shit. And then with Zero, I'm like, we're finally getting a Star Fox in the Wii U. And then I was like, oh, this is the game that they're going to use the gamepad for. This, this, this. <laughs> At the this end of the Wii U's life cycle, you're going to yeah. decide to do this. At the very end, like the Wii came out with Wii Sports. That showed off how the Wiimote was used. And it was like, okay, cool. Good for you guys, yep. right? The Wii U just never they, was they, like, here's they a game no pad. Uh, no we don't know what to you? do with it. <sighs> it is kind of interesting that Ubisoft probably had a better grasp on how to use it than Nintendo did. <laughs> um, no, dude, I'm with you, man. Like, I I mean, I feel like I want to say they should reboot Star Fox. But that's literally what they've done like three times now. Like, I don't know what they do with Star Fox yeah, now. I, mean, I, I think they, they fucked up too bad with Zero. <laughs> like, I think it's done. And that I hurts me. It really hurts me. But yeah. you know what? Maybe one day. <laughs> um, this, is, this is a good one here. Okay. We didn't even talk about virtual console at all in this whole There's this nothing whole to talk thing. about. <laughs> Tyler Quill <laughs> says, what launch games do you want to see for the virtual console? I mean, on the one hand, like you want the classics. You want Mario. You want Zelda. You want Mario World. Super Link Mario to the World, past. Man, Exactly. Come on. Uh, but on the other hand, I, I own, like, everyone owns, like, three, four times over probably. I want stuff they haven't re-released yet. Like, I would love to get the Super FX games, finally. Get Yoshi's Island on there. Mm, we were talking before mm, how that's your, yeah. like, your favorite game, Fucking right? I love it, man. Yeah, that, now's the time. Bring it, it is. Out. It definitely is. I, I'm interested in Virtual Console in every way of just when's it happening, how is it happening, what's the deal. But what we've seen before with the Wii and Wii U, 3DS, DS, all that stuff, is that it, they trickle it out. Yep. And it's just little games over little games. Do they do that again? Or do they come out and be like, here's the library. 80 games. Yeah. Maybe not the whole library, but like, all right, let's be honest. 
the Mario Mario one, two, and three, Mario World, Link to the Past, the Zelda game. Like, let's get the stuff that we know is going to be there. <laughs> yeah, get it all out there. But it's like, but the marketing is if they can trickle it out week to week, why wouldn't they? I mean, it, wor- it worked for the Wii. I, I don't know what you can say how it did for the Wii U. But, I mean, the Wii U obviously didn't do well, so I don't think they could trickle out again to the same degree. There are still games that were on Wii Virtual Console that aren't on the Wii U's Virtual Console. Mm-hmm. They can't do that again. Yeah, um, and I then think- you'd have to do the dumbass shit where <laughs> you went into Wii mode on the Wii U Wii and bought it in the, the, the so Wii stupid. store. It's so dumb. Doot, doot. Come on, man. The most annoying thing is like, yeah, you, you to get just to get to the Wii menu, you need you need to point at it with a Wii with a Wii yep. remote on the sensor bar. Which you don't even need the sensor bar for the the for the games themselves. It's so annoying. You need like three different controllers to be, start the game. And that is maybe my favorite thing about the Switch is that it's so simplified in terms of controllers yeah. and, yep. and input devices. There's a whole bunch of them, and they all do different things, but they all do everything. And it's like, thank you. That's it. Why yeah. couldn't we use GameCube controllers for Mario Kart 8 on the Wii U? Why? Right? Why not? Ignorant question about the virtual console, somebody who's, you know, lapsed and everything else. Do you think that what they could do is say, all right, here's the library, and then the things that are trickling out would be GameCube games? Because that was always the rumor, right, that they were going to add GameCube to the I library. mean, that, right. that is the, the huge thing. The, the problem with the GameCube virtual console rumors that I do believe are true is the lack of analog triggers mm. on any of the switches controllers sure so then then we would be getting into that territory of they would have to announce smash they'd have to announce that the usb adapter from smash is compatible with the um switch which it should be yeah but <laughs> what what gets complicated Just with get that over, guys. is on. is plugging that means it has to be docked because you can't plug that thing into the, the switch itself like there's a lot of uh, weird questions there but those controllers obviously have analog triggers but like there is an option and this would require them to do a lot of work so i don't know that that'll happen um where they come up with some type of solution where maybe different button presses kind of like how the psp would handle um games that had two shoulder buttons right oh vita you mean uh oh well yeah vita had the i guess both yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh yeah, exactly. But PSP where it's like if you hold up and R, it'll do this thing. Oh, so you like, mean on a native like resistance uh, retribution? I understand. Yeah, that Sorry, type of apologies. stuff. So it's like with um, like Mario Sunshine, for example. If that were to come to it, like you can't control flood with a just with the digital. You need the analog. So they'd have to come up with some type of solution. Let me float this at you. Float it to me. Do you think? Because I still think that I'm not a big fan. I think it's just time all you Smash Brothers just suck it up. <laughs> Start using a controller made no. in this fucking decade. Oh, no. no. No, don't. What if they did this, though, instead? They're like, adapter ain't going to work. But they'll give you the pro controller, a new pro controller that's like a GameCube one, or they give you fucking Joy-Cons that are yeah. the Joy-Cons that are the I, I would yeah. love that. Yeah. I would absolutely love that. I hope that we start seeing different Joy-Cons, but that goes directly against what I was just saying. That everything works. Yeah, that everything way. works. And so it's like, but that, I mean, that is a problem. Like, they, they should have had analog triggers from the get-go on all of the controllers, on the Joy-Con, on the pro controller, and all that stuff, because this is going to be an issue. Or it's a sign the GameCube is not happening. I mean, I just like clicking those those buttons anyway. Oh, they right? feels so good. It's, like, it's got the it's groove. Like so fun. damn good. Yeah, so good. Oh, man. Final question for you here. Got so many wave birds at home. <laughs> <laughs> I still have some IGN ones. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> Bagel Chris wants to know, where does his interest in Crash Bandicoot lie? So, <laughs> I'm interested. I actually want to play the remake. I, I wasn't the biggest ever Crash guy. I mean, I was a Nintendo guy. Yeah. So, Crash was the enemy. Like, mm. he showed up at all the Sony ads. He's, like, mocking he Nintendo. He's talking shit. I'm driving like, up in Washington. This? Right? Calm down, bro. <laughs> <laughs> like, what is this shit? Get out of here, Crash. Um, at the same time, like, I have to admit, like, Crash looked awesome in the day. I'm, like, I'm a little bit jealous. Like, I want to play Crash on my console. I'm um, on my 64. Uh, so I never I never really got into it. Like, I played, I did download the, um, when they re-released them on the PlayStation Store. Oh, yeah. So I played through them a little bit, but I never really got fully back into them. So I'm looking forward to the remake, remake, just so I can really, truly, properly experience them. I'm so, so excited for the remake, if if anyone didn't didn't know. (laughs) Um, But I'm thinking a lot recently about Crash Bandicoot. Sure you have. Of course you have. And and why why I like it so much, and I've said this before in different ways, but like this discussion, I think, really fits with this, where Crash Bandicoot was the sequel to Mario that I thought we were going to get and we got 64 instead. Yeah. So 64 was super mm. open, but Crash Bandicoot played like Mario World in 3D, right? It just shifted the perspective, but it was still obstacle-based platforming, yeah. whereas 64 was not about platforming. And we saw it perfected with uh, Galaxy and even more so uh, 3D World. But Crash, that's why I like Crash so much. 
So I hope you guys enjoy him too. June 30th in stores. Your birthday. <laughs> Please support this so we can get more. Hashtag buy the Bandicoot. I don't know. I, I, actually, this is all I need. Oh, Crash Team Racing. It, buy it so that we can get Crash Team Racing. See, I, mean, I need. That's a game I've heard I need to play. Like, Crash Team I Racing loved, is so damn good. That's what I keep hearing. I love Diddy Kong Racing back in the day. I heard this game is basically Sony's it, version of that. It is. Yeah. Absolutely. I, I, I was always weird on Diddy. Oh, really? Some, oh, man. There's something about because I was a Nintendo guy, it was just like, oh, well, Mario Kart. See, for me, like, I felt like this is what Mario Kart should be, especially going back now. Like, Mario Kart 64, I love Mario Kart 64 back in the day. Like, I, I cannot go back to it. It feels so dated, except yeah. for maybe Battle Especially Mode. graphic. Battle Mode's so much fun still. Yeah, it's still fun. But, like, looking at the game, it's, it's just like, yeah. there's just like the 2D, like, JPEG. As you go around the corners. Yeah, that's weird. Are you stoked for the Battle Mode, by the way? I am. I am. But I'm like, where's Block Fort, though? That that needs to come back. I know but it, that's, it's not. Though. That's that's like, the only arena that needs to. Yeah, I'm a little concerned when it comes to Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, just because I I wanted a bit more than they're they're giving with this. I'm so excited for it, but like I did play the DLC and like I it's, I expected like the original rumors of the leaks that weren't true was that there was going to be uh, two more cups right. added to this in addition to the DLC. Granted, that is a shit ton of content for a Mario Kart yeah. game. But I'm like, yeah, hell yeah, I'm, I'm down for that. But then it's like, oh, we're going to battle mode. The proper battle mode's coming back, and we're doing it right. You, you can't do it right without Block 4. You can't. There is no doing it right without Block 4. That's true. And it feels a little bit lopsided. They have, what, like 70, 70 racetracks, I think, for the Grand Prix? 60, something like that. And then they have eight in the battle mode? Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I, I, mean, I agree with you. I'm excited for the battle mode, but I kind of wish there were more, some, some more tracks there for the main game yeah. as well. Yeah, I'm all about racing. I don't care about that battle mode. Never oh, did, never yeah. will. Oh, dude, battle mode's <laughs> where it is at. But you are you're a double dash guy, right? Like yeah. I am. So yeah. I, all right, I, I get that. I respect that. Thank I have you. To respect the, you. The, the double you. the double items in this I, are going to be interesting. I think that that is enough of a change to Mario Kart Eight that I'm like, fuck, that's going to shift the entire landscape of it. I mean that, and then the third boost they're adding, the yeah. the pink sparks, the pink one, yeah. yeah. So I mean that's like it's a small thing, but that's going to change how you race through these courses a yeah. little bit. Yeah. So yeah. get hyped. If Can't fucking wait. It's Every time we talk about it, I check my email, see if the codes <laughs> come through. Right? Oh man, one day, one day, hopefully. Well, Andre, thank you so much. This has been excellent. Dude, I've waited my me. entire life. To Appreciate it, guys. Talk to someone about Nintendo that actually cares. <laughs> it's been years. <laughs> this is so exciting for me. Um, where can people find you? Uh, Game Explain, YouTube, everywhere. You know, Facebook, Twitter, and then at Andre Seegers on Twitter personally. Awesome. You have you guys have Patreon, right? We do have Patreon. Yeah. Patreon.com slash Game Explain. Gotcha. Game Explain one e. One in e. Between yeah. The, so in it's inner the cap with the capital X there. But it doesn't matter how you spell it. Like Google will get you there. So. <laughs> yeah. You mean Game Explain? There you go. Search there engines you go. are a wonderful thing. They really are. Well, thank you. You got to come back soon at some point. We should make this a more regular thing. Hell yeah, I'd love to. Until next time, I love you. Well, that was awesome. I love talking about Nintendo. If you want to see more of me talking about Nintendo, click here to subscribe to Kind of Funny Games. If you want to see more about just other stuff that's not video game related, bam! That's just kind of funny. It's a good time, too. Patreon, support us there, please. Running out of time. Kevin's giving me the little... See you guys later.